Okay, so Jeremy, you ask, if any direction of my attention is spontaneous and happens by itself, like the growing of a hair or the turning of the earth, how should I practice? How can I? And uh, you are pointing to something important here. You know, and, and one of the things that happens, uh, one, of, one of the ways I use uh, the, some of the tools of Zen is first we uh, build up a scaffolding of practice and then we gradually deconstruct it. Um, and so in a way, part of the place that this question uh, comes from is uh, uh, with regard, it, it is, is, it's kind of in the space of shikantaza. Shikantaza is sometimes called um, just sitting. And shikantaza, the way I teach it, is, uh, is a uh, radically non-dual practice of desisting from all doings. Shikantaza in this way is not in a category of things that can be done. It's not in a category of things that can be succeeded at or failed at. And part of the richness of exploring shikantaza is looking for all of these uh, subtle doings, these subtle strivings and tryings and assessings and uh, and practicing seeing through those as well, desisting from all that effort. You know, and this is what Zen teacher Barry Majid uh, calls uh, looking for the secret practices. So we might say that um, my practice is shikantaza, but you know, the, the secret practice is what we're really doing, which is trying to feel calm or trying to feel centered or trying to whatever, or trying to feel special or be more compassionate or, or any of these other games that we can be playing. But so in, in my lineage, in my tradition, we don't start with shikantaza because it, it, it can be too, uh, too disorienting. Um, and so uh, we, we start with some version of breath practice. And, uh, and what we do with breath practice is whatever arises, whatever uh, mental formation arises, whether it's a question or a doubt or a physical sensation or a wish for what you want to happen or a planning for what you're going to eat for dinner, whenever you see that your attention has moved on to anything other than the intended object, which is your breath, you see that that's happened, you unhook from that storyline, and you come back to the breath back to the posture, back to just this. And this seeing, unhooking, and returning, this is the essence of, uh, of breath practice. And in breath practice, we, in, in a certain way, do prefer a certain object of mind. Whenever, whenever what has arisen as an object of mind is anything other than the breath, we unhook from that and we return to the breath as an object of mind. As we uh, move into shikantaza, we no longer uh, prefer breath as an object of mind. Uh, and shikantaza is receiving all arisings into one category. And that one category is stuff that arises. And uh, and shikantaza is, uh, is a really powerful and very subtle practice. And it's easy to, uh, to fall into secret practices that you're not aware of. It's easy to uh, find yourself in a, in a, in a little uh, cul-de-sac. It's easy to find yourself into playing uh, some kind of uh, game with your mind. And so I encourage you to... Uh, to first start with this version of breath practice where you're seeing the arising of mental formations, unhooking and returning. It doesn't matter how long you stay. It's the discerning, unhooking and returning. That's the essence of the practice. And then bring these questions about shikantaza to a Zen teacher. Um, and these are, these are uh, this, is, this, is, this is really important important 
uh, the, this is an important question. And you're, you're pointing to something important as well with regard to the, uh, that even the intending uh, is potentially too much of a doing, too much of a thing, too much of a, uh, uh, a preferencing. Um, and, uh, uh, and yet, Shikantaza is not nothing either. So uh, I encourage you to take up these practices and I hope to cross paths with you someday.